for the purposes of my talk, I'm just going to I'm going to assume that everyone knows that publishers gen generally help to solve two problems. That's uh, funding a game and marketing a game. And I'm also going to assume that you've already decided that you want to work with a publisher because there's lots of reasons you might not want to work with a publisher, but we don't have time to cover those today. So for simplicity, I'm just going to talk about the typical indie situation that you have, which is your team specializes in making games and you need a publisher to provide additional funding to let you finish it as well as access to marketing skills to tell people uh, that the game's available to buy. Whenever you're running a, a games company as a business rather than a hobby, i.e. you're expecting your game to return more money than you spend making it, then making your game is actually only half the problem you need to solve. Making an audience for your game is the other half of, of that problem. And most people, especially those who are newer to the industry, can un underestimate just how difficult the making an audience problem is to solve. When I first started, I remember well, I used to believe what I think most of us who've grown up playing games believe thought, which is that great games sell themselves. But I soon learned the hard way that it's not really true, at least not most of the time. I learned the same lesson many times, which is that great games do not sell well-marketed games sell, and great games that are well-marketed sell lots. So you're going to be making a great game, and you need to be sure that your partner, you partner with a publisher who's going to do just as great a job of your game's marketing. That is how profitable games happen. So I'm hoping you're convinced by this point that, that you're, you're going to be working with a publisher, and um, you want to work with a publisher rather than fund it and, and market it yourself, because that's the alternative, right? So where do you start? Who are publishers and how do you even get in touch with them? Well, good news is that the helpful people at Fundamentally Games have already compiled a really good list of companies that you can approach to finance your game, and they've published it on their website. I'm just going to drop the, the link to it in the chat here, actually. <clears throat> That's, that's the link to it there. If you go to the financier list on that website and choose the publisher category, you'll find a list of 50 publishers that you can contact about your game. There's way more than that, but if, if you don't know where to start, I'd recommend starting there. All the companies on that list are capable of providing the funding and marketing support that you would need to turn your game into a huge hit. Now that you know who you're going to be contacting, don't do it yet. And that's really important. Before that, make sure to do your research. That was something that, that Dave touched on earlier. Just like developers, some publishers specialize in certain types of games. So don't spam everyone in the hope of getting a meeting, as you could waste an awful lot of time and energy doing that. It's also a really small world, and these people all talk to each other. So if you do a generic spam email to loads of publishers, they will notice and they are going to judge your submission accordingly. A better approach is to do some legwork first. So research the companies and identify no more than maybe like five or six publishers with a portfolio of games that you think your game would fit into and go after them. Find out what games they've done, what games they have in development, who's in charge of the publishing, who their trusted lieutenants are, and, and whether you know anyone in your own network that can give you a warm introduction. Because again, as, as, as David touched on, the games industry leverages personal connections an awful lot. So getting a personal introduction to a publisher from a mutual acquaintance is always going to be preferable to a cold email. That said, don't panic if, if you've not got a connection already. If you do your homework and you're able to, to make a strong impression when, when you get in touch, then you're able to talk about their portfolio and the titles they have in development, you're already going to be head and shoulders above an awful lot of the, the companies that, that they talk to on a daily basis. So once you've got that figured out, you need to, to understand that you're, um, you're going to have to get your game ready to present. And you're going to have to present it in a way that's as dazzling as it possibly can be, right? It's just like job interviews or first dates. You need your game to make an impression, 
to ensure that you're going to get invited back for that all-important second meeting. Competition is really tough. There's lots of people looking for publishing deals. Publishers see hundreds of games presentations a year. So it's up to you to make sure that your game is as eye-catching and memorable as possible to have the best chance of landing yourself that publishing deal. Uh, that means spending time making your game looking as good as it possibly can. Publishers expect developers to do an awful lot of the work up front these days to demonstrate the commercial potential of, of their game. And I think the absolute minimum that you could expect to stand a chance with these days is maybe like a slide deck that, that says this is how the game is going to look and some sort of playable demo to indicate the type of game it's going to be. So they can even say, plays like this and it's going to look like that. Imagine, you know, that's, that's probably minimal. But realistically, you're going to need more than that to increase your chances. A video of some description that acts as a kind of sizzle reel for your game, I think that would be highly recommended. Um, something that, that really gets people excited when they're, they're watching it to, to see what the potential of your game is. And the aim here, right, the ultimate aim is to turn all your new publishing contacts into internal evangelists for your game. So they're excited about the game. And most importantly, they want to tell their boss about it because their boss isn't going to want to play the game. They're too busy. They just want to see how great it looks in the promotional media, which is why having some sort of sizzle video at that point really helps. Because remember this, right? Whoever you show your game to a publisher will not be the decision maker. So even if they say they love your game and they tell you it's the best thing they've ever seen and they want to sign it, don't fall for it, right? They're going to have to convince a whole lot of people within their company. And flashy demos and slick videos are only going to get you so far because ultimately the suits in the publisher will be caring about only one thing, numbers, right? So this is where the games business meets the business business kind of head on. It's comparatively easy, actually, to, to get the game scouts at a publisher to have a meeting with you and tell you that they like your game. Uh, they're usually all gamers and they love, they're going to love what you love about the, the game. They're going to be excited about that. The business people, not so much. They're kind of like the publisher's second line of defense and, and you have to win them over too. So be prepared. That means you're going to need to know the budget that you need to finish your game. You're now going to need some sort of business plan. Uh, you need to figure out whether you already have the expertise that you need in your team or whether you're going to have to recruit people, what size of team you need. How many coders, artists, designers, who's doing your testing, who's doing your audio, who's doing localization? All of these questions are going to come up at this point, and you are going to get judged by the quality and credibility of your answers. So again, preparation is everything here. Speak to people, uh, as, as David was uh, and, and Jamie were suggesting, you know, speak to people who've done it before and use that as a guide. There's plenty of online communities where you can access that kind of information these days. And most people in the industry, including myself, David, et cetera, are really giving of their time and expertise if you go to the trouble of reaching out with a, a problem on social media, et cetera. Um, it's also where experienced business advisors and accountants like Henderson Loggy can add value to your proposal because we all, all have seen enough games being developed to know whether the budgets and the timescales and resources that you're proposing are going to sound credible to a publisher. Once you've got your playable demo to convince the game scouts how good your game and your team is, you've got a sizzle reel for your, your scouts to sell your game internally, and you've got a realistic budget, a schedule and a resource plan, then you're finally ready to launch that charm offensive on an unsuspecting band of publishers. And it's time to start haranguing them. Now, persistence is really important here because publishers receive an awful lot of inquiries and they sign a tiny number of the games that they look at. So don't be dispirited if you don't hear back on your first attempt. The, you really need to be prepared to contact them, follow up, leave it for a little while, contact them again, and don't give in until you have an answer, even if the answer is no. Some publishers use just simply ignoring emails as a barrier to separate out the developers who really want their attention from those who merely would like it. So be prepared. Um, remember, you've already weeded out all the inappropriate publishers when you did your homework. So that means you've got something compelling to offer. Make sure that you let them know what that is in the communication. 
And from that point, assuming you've done your, your homework well, then your foot's going to be in the door. There's plenty more to overcome at that point, all the, all the legal issues such as intellectual property rights, uh, revenue shares, et cetera, and so on. Um, all of that's up to, to, for debate, but that's a conversation for another day. But following that path I've just outlined here, that's going to help you overcome those initial hurdles that new teams face. And, and at least get you on the radar of publishers and give you a fighting chance that you can turn your, your game into a great business.